What's up YouTube, this is your boy Nick here and today I'll be revealing the results from last night's WWE SummerSlam pay-per-view event uh, presented by Cricket Wireless and KFC. And before we get started, we'd like to once again send out a special thanks to Wale for my PYT, Flo Rida for who's with me, and also Fort Minor for Welcome, which would which was the official SummerSlam theme songs available now on iTunes and Spotify. Alright guys, we're gonna kick things off with the with the first of three matches that were on the kickoff show. The this first one was rep, was from SmackDown Live. It was in a 12-man tag team match between the Usos, American Alpha, and the Hype Bros, teaming up against the Ascension, the Vaud Villains, and also Brizongo. Now, now this match was literally back and forth. You know, um, there was there was uh, there was a lot of tension. Um, uh, Mojo Raleigh was was getting hyped as always. Um, there was a lot. There was a lot of high flying. You know, there there was a lot of action going on. But in the end, American Alpha hit their finishing move, and then the Us and then I believe Jay Uso got the blind tag and hit the hit the Superfly Splash on I believe I I think it was Connor I believe. Or no 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 it was um, uh, Simon Gotch, and got and got the three count. So therefore, your winners were the Usos, American Alpha, and the Hype Bros. All right, guys. Now we move on to Mon for to the two kickoff show matches for Raw. This first one it was was a tag team match between the Dudley Boys taking on Sami Zayn and Neville. Now of course. Of course, Sami Zayn had the had the uh, home field advantage advantage because well because uh, well he's got a lot of fans in Brooklyn. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. And anyway, yeah. The match was pretty much all was literally all Dudley Boys, but in the end, um, there was another mu another miscommunication by by the Dudleys, which led into a halluva kick. To, Bub to Bubba Ray Dudley, and and then a Red Arrow, f followed by a three count. All right, guys, we now move on to the best of seven series between Sheamus and Cesaro. Of course, the the result was that Sheamus hit the bro kick on on Cesaro, and therefore Sheamus became had won the first match of the best of seven series. Um, I mean, the match was pretty much back and forth. You know, the, ma the match could only eat either way, but Sheamus won. Alright guys, now we move on to SummerSlam, to the official SummerSlam pay-per-view with their, with the opening match between Jericho, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, and the homecoming of Enzo Amore and Big Cass. Um... Of course, the homecoming was had had came up short. Um, Kevin Owens th literally threw Enzo Amore right into a code breaker, and Jericho got the three count. Um, of course, of course, uh, as I mentioned with uh, as as I mentioned with about and en about Enzo and Cass. Sure, sure, they may have had the home field advantage, but just because that they had the home field advantage doesn't mean that they might win. Alright guys, now we move on to the first of six title matches we had on the card last night. This this was the first. It is, it was the women's championship on the line as Charlotte had, was was to defend against Charlotte. Um... Sasha Banks had the bank statement on Charlotte, but her back gave out, and which led to Charlotte picking up a pinfall victory. Well, well, a roll-up pinfall victory, if you will. And um, Charlotte is now a two-time women's champion. 
Alright guys, now we go, now we move on to the Intercontinental Championship as The Miz was defending the Intercontinental title against Apollo Crews. Um, on, on, honestly, this match was a little, a little mediocre to me, if you will, but The Miz defeated Apollo Crews to retain the Intercontinental title. Alright guys, now, now we move on to a match that was 15 years in the making as the phenomenal AJ Styles go, went one-on-one -on -one with John Cena. Now of course, Brooklyn, of course, with when it comes to Brooklyn and John Cena, they do not mix very well. Of course, if you recall last year in Brooklyn at SummerSlam, uh, AJ St um, sorry, John Cena lost to Seth Rollins to be, lost to Seth Rollins. All thanks to Jon Stewart and a chair. This time it was to AJ Styles and a phenomenal forearm. Um, what happened there after John Cena took his arm, his um, well, n normally it, it normally it would be a headband, but he used it he used it as an armband. So he so he took it off, placed it on the in his place in the ring, and he walked out. Honestly, that match was. Amazing! I gotta give them props. That was one hell of a match. But in the end, AJ Styles did beat John Cena, but without Gallows and Anderson. And speaking of Gallows and Anderson, we move on to the tag team titles as the New Day with John Stewart at ringside against Gallows and Anderson. Um. Um, Gallows and Anderson would would have won the match. But they decided to attempt to give Jon Stewart the disease known as ring post itis. Of course, at the end, Big E got involved, which led to a disqualification. So, Gallows and Anderson did win the match, but under championship, uh, but in a championship match, you can only win by pinfall or submission. So therefore, the New Day is still your tag is still the tag team champions, and they have now now they have held the title for 365 days, a whole year. All right, guys. Now we move on to the WWE World Championship as Dean Ambrose defended the title against Dolph uh, against a very confident Dolph Ziggler. Um, the match was. Literally awesome. It, it it was awesome. I loved it. Um, what happened was that um, um, the match the match was literally all Ambrose, but in the end, literally, um, um, Dean Ambrose hit at at the at the closing moments of the match. Dean Ambrose hit Dirty Deeds on Dolph Ziggler. And and he retained the chant the world the WWE world title. Honestly, I got honestly I I gotta give props to, to Dolph Ziggler. He was confident going into this match for weeks. Now he was confident, and, but in the end, Dean Ambrose was the better man. All right, guys. Now we move on to a six woman tag team match between Becky Lynch. Can't um, uh, Naomi and Carmella against Natal against I guess Natalia Alexa Bliss and it was supposed to be Eva Marie but apparently she she was going through s exhaustion and stress or whatever over hostile fans. Um, honestly, I find that pathetic because the thing is, she, all she's doing. Is trying to get get out of matches. I think she. I, I honestly, honestly. I think that SmackDown Live should not have chose Eva Marie to be a part of SmackDown Live, especially especially because of what you have on SmackDown Live. You got Natalia, Alexa Bliss, Cam, um, um, uh, Carmella, Becky Lynch, Naomi. Who else? Um, you know, you know, and but, um, but Natalia and Alexa Bliss's partner 
ended up being the return, the returning Nikki Bella, and and the match was back and forth. It could have went either way, but in the end, Nikki Bella um to pins Carmella to win the whole match. All right, guys. Now we move. On, now we move on to the Universal Championship, and I have on my phone right now a photo of what the Universal Championship looks like. Now, this is courtesy of um, of uh, of uh, Team Stream, which is a Bleacher Report app. This is what the championship looks like, all red and everything. As um, as Finn Balor went one on one with Seth Rollins. Um, this match was off the chart. I think that this match could very may well be better than than Samoa Joe against Shinsuke Nakamura for the NXT title. Which, by the way, we have a new NXT champion in Shinsuke Nakamura. So, for, for Shinsuke Nakamura, congrats. You earned it. Um, this match was back and forth, you know. Um, there, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of fans chanting... Shannon, let's go Rollins, and then and then a lot of the fans chain, let's go Balor. Um, in the end, in the end, um, Finn Balor hit hit the drop kick, not once, not twice, but three times, and hit the coup de gras on Seth Rollins to become the Universal Champion. Although I am curious to know what his side plates are are, are going to look like, that's something that I'm I'm curious about. All right, guys, now we move on to the United States Championship as Rusev was to, was to defend against Roman Reigns, but unfortunately it ended in a no contest because as soon as Roman Reigns entered the ring, Rusev started attacking him, and Roman Reigns just kept on going after after the ribs. And his back, and the ring announcer said this match will not take place because Rusev cannot compete. So the whole so so the fight ended with Roman Reigns hitting a spear on Rusev, and yeah, yeah, no contest. But there is a rumor going around saying that, um. Roman Reigns could very may well have another shot at the United States title, but who knows. Alright guys, then we move on to our main event. Between Suplex City and Viperville. As Brock Lesnar went one-on-one -on -one with the Viper, Randy Orton. Now this match was insane. The match was all over the place. Um... Brock Lesnar threw Randy Orton onto the SmackDown Live announce table. Um, then was about to do something on the Raw announce table, but decided to get an RKO out of nowhere. Um, in the end, um, at the closing moments of the match, Randy Orton hit hit his signature DDT on the on on, on the. In, on, on the middle ring rope as he normally does, then hit, then he hit the, then he hit the, hit the RKO, almost got the three count, but Brock Lesnar kicked out. Randy Orton was about to hit the punt, in which he's taking out so many men from from the likes of John Cena, Shane McMahon, uh, uh, Batista, uh, uh, Vince McMahon, Triple H, you know, so many men. Over the years, but in the end, Brock Lesnar hit the F5. But what happened next was a massacre. He took his gloves off and started pounding on him, hitting his el hitting the point the point of his elbow onto Randy Orton's temple, and and he and Randy Orton was a complete mess. His entire face was bloody. And the match had had to be stopped by TKO. Um, um, he and he just kept pounding on him, kept pounding on him. But Shane McMahon did come into the ring, 
but Brock Lesnar gave Shane McMahon an F5. Honestly, I, I honestly, I honestly, if I was McFoley, I would definitely, I would definitely suspend him for it and fine him, no doubt. All right, guys. Well, that is it for for the summer for for the for the results. If you enjoyed this video, please post a comment below, like and subscribe for more. And if you're a WWE fan, be sure to follow me on Twitter at WWE underscore Minister for all the latest WWE news, rumors, match card updates, and more. And if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Yu-Gi-Oh Player ninety six for future openings, tech profiles, binder updates, epic polls, news, and more. I'll put links in the description below so you can check it out. So you can check me out. Also, I would like to announce that um, that if you guys did watch SummerSlam last night, you would have known. You, you would have seen the ad that for the for the WWE Network that there will be 19 pay-per-views per year. So I will be doing. So I will be doing 19 results and 19 prediction videos. Per year, so stay tuned for that. And the next time, and, and and the next pay per view I will be doing will be Backlash, which will be SmackDown's pay per view, and also also Clash of Champions, which will be Raw's pay per view. So stay tuned for that. On that, this is your boy Nick here signing off.